to another exciting episode of Collector's Edition 101. Class is now in session. So today we are back with some more graded cards. We just got back a wonderful submission of about 500 graded cards back from PSA. Uh, we are very excited to show off some of these cards. We've already processed the cards, priced them, checked out their populations, and now we're just going to go through some of the ones that we've received and uh, kind of show some of them off. So let's start with our first stack today. We're going to be going through some, uh, looks like some trainers first. Make sure we have a good angle there. Perfect. Beautiful. So first one, we got a Gem Mint Energy Recycle System. Beautiful 10. Next up, Energy Removal 2 from Power Keepers. Nine on that one. So as we're going through this set a little bit, um, you're going to notice a lot of these are Power Keepers. Um, very fantastic grades on all of these. This came from a private collection that we had purchased last year. And we sent it off and we had been eagerly expecting this collection back. And we finally, finally got it back. Uh, as you guys know, PSA has stopped taking submissions at the moment. Um, the only exception is if you choose their highest class service, which is right around $300 a card right now. Um, and even then, I believe the turnaround times to get those cards back are still pretty intense. Um, at the moment, I believe Beckett has also increased their prices as well as CGC. Um, as you've seen on our channel here before, we've had a strew of PSA, Beckett, and CGC. We are not really particular in which company that we go through, um, though obviously the Pokemon um, community does favor PSA in comparison to any of the other types of the companies. Um, my personal opinion, I think PSA is pretty good. Um, I think CGC is an up-and-coming rising star. Uh, a lot of companies believe, or a lot of, not a lot of companies, pardon me, a lot of people believe that uh, CGC is too new to the grading industry and they don't really know what they're doing yet. Um, I argue the fact that CGC has been grading comic books for over 20 years, I want to say. And they have done a fantastic job. And when it comes to the world of CGC and comic books, uh, if it's not graded by CGC, it's almost doesn't even matter when it comes to a comic book. So I think in the long run, they're definitely going to be a powerhouse when it comes to the graded card industry. Uh, once they find their foothold and get kind of used to everything. So I'm very excited to see where they're going to go in the future. As we finish up some of these, we're down to one of the last couple energies here. Um, bunch of really cool graded cards from the EX era that we're reviewing today. A lot of it's going to be from Power Keepers, Unseen Forces. We have a couple odds and end cool cards, like base set things and such. Um, and once we get through some of these, we're going to kind of slow it down just a little bit. So, got a Battle Frontier and a Drake Stadium. Perfect. Uh, I did just want to talk about, like I said, I want to talk about the grading companies and where my stance is on some of those different companies. Um, like I said, I think CGC in the long run is going to be a very good company. PSA is going to hold its favor in the Pokemon industry as well. And of course, Beckett is good as long as you're shooting for those black labels. Which, for those of you that don't know, a black label black label P, uh, Beckett card is when a card gets a perfect 10 grading on all four categories. It's centering, it's surface, it's edges, and it's corners. Very, very difficult thing to do, and that's why those black label cards fetch such a high premium. So, now that we finished up some of those trainers, we're going to take a little bit more time here. We're going to go through some of these and really admire. Uh, right now, we have a Absolute EX from Power Keepers. Beautiful Gem Mint 10. Uh, moving through some more of the EXs, we have Claydol EX at a Mint 9. Flygon EX, also at a Mint 9. Beautiful card. I really love how these old EXs look. Just something about that beautiful silver border. Metagross EX comes in at a 9. Thalamance EX at a Gem Mint 10. Shiptree EX at an 8.5. Um, 
things I noticed that when we were checking the population, not a lot of these cards that we got back. Um, Skarmory at a 9. Uh, a lot of cards that are in that 8.5 category all have very low populations. Uh, apparently, PSA just doesn't give out that 8.5 or those 0.5 grades very often. Walring at a PSA 9. Um, and so because of that, I feel like those 0.5 grades are a lot more desirable than some of the other ones. I feel like maybe an 8.5 might be more desired than a 9 because there are a lot more 9s than there are 8.5s. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. Give me your thoughts down below. Um, here come the next big three that I'm very excited to show off. Flareon Star from EX Power Keepers. We got a 9 on that one. Jolteon Star. Also got a 9. And Vaporeon Star. Finishing out that sequential 9 set in the grading categories. And if you are unfamiliar with the term sequential when it comes to the grading industry, uh, that means that all three of these cards were graded in set order. So these cards were sent off as card number 100, card number 101, card number 102. And that reflects in their serial numbers right up here at the top. So we have a serial number ending in 598, 599, and 600. Meaning all three of these cards are sequentially graded. They were graded one after another. And the fact that that matches their set pattern too is also such a really cool thing. So we have a Grass Energy from Power Keepers right at that 601 mark. And the Fire Energy. These energies were some of the favorites for a lot of players back in the day. Um, I personally thought they were really cool. If you don't know the terminology, but there was one set of energies from, I want to say it was EX Emerald. And those were commonly referred to as the Matrix Energies. The Matrix Energies kind of had an all-black background with little sparks and speckles of greens and blues, whatever the type of the energy was. And those were energies were very, very popular for the longest time. Uh, they were very hard to come by, very hard to get those complete sets of those. Um, by far my personal favorite in all of the energies so far that we've ever seen. But they continue to put out more and more really cool energies every year, so that could change. Moving on, we're going to go back to the Power Keepers again. Uh, we've got a Pichu Reverse Hollow at a PSA 9. Sableye Reverse Hollow, PSA 9. If you haven't guessed so far, this is actually a uh, complete set of Power Keepers pretty much in Reverse Hollow that we sent off to be graded. And again, all of these are beautifully graded in sequential order. Um, so if there's a bunch of things that you need for your collection and you kind of love getting those sequential cards when it comes to grading, this is definitely a really cool opportunity for any of you. Anorath, got a 9. And there's a lot of these Pokemons that I feel like they just haven't really uh, done any reprints of. Like, there's very f there's some of these Pokemon that have very few appearances in the card game. Charmeleon is definitely not one of them. Coming in a beautiful gem mint pen. Gorgeous card. Uh, we got Combuskin here at a 9. And I think because of the fact that some of those Pokemon have such low population within the card game... Uh, I think that makes some of them very favorable as well. Curlia at a 9. Laron at an 8.5. Machoke also got a 9. And Metacham also got a 9. That artwork is gorgeous. That full moon in the background, him doing that cool stance. Very comic book style artwork. Grab our next handful here. So we got a Matang at a reverse 7. Nuzleaf at an 8.5. Cilio at 8. Oh, no, Cilio at a 9. Excuse me. Sharpedo at an 8.5. Shellgun, reverse hollow at a 9. The Bravo, reverse hollow at a 9 as well. And as we're showing some of these off, I'm just going to kind of keep talking. Uh, I will show the cards and, you know, we'll let some, uh, get some really good angles on them to show off uh, the artworks and the foil. But I want to discuss a little bit more right now some of the older cards like these. So I keep saying these are reverse hollows. And if you're newer to the game and you've just joined the community within the first, 
within the last year or so. First of all, welcome to the community. Um, don't let it fool you. This last year has been very chaotic. And the Pokemon community, by far, is one of the most wholesome communities that I have ever been a part of. Um, so many nice people. So many good friends that I've made across many, many years of vending events and judging tournaments. And it's just, we're, we're one big family. That's really what it comes down to. And um, as I was saying, before I continue with any more stories. So if you've joined this, this family within the last year, welcome to this family. And um, I say these cards are reverse hollows, and that might throw some people off because obviously we are currently used to reverse hollows, meaning that the rest of the card, meaning, you know, the attack, the outer border, and everything else is holographic, but the picture is not. During the EX era, a reverse hollow was categorized by the fact that the artwork itself would be holographic, and man, those lights really pop in this. This is a gorgeous looking card foil. So the artwork itself would be holographic and the rest of the card would not, and the way that you'd be that signifier would be that set. They would put the set symbol within the bottom right corner of the artwork, and that is how you would identify when a card was reverse hollow. Now, I believe they kept this up for the EX era for quite some time, and then eventually they reverted back to the old style, where the rest of the card was holographic, but the artwork was not. And, uh, I don't know, I think I like this old style a lot better. I think they should kind of switch back to it, but I don't know. Give me your thoughts, guys. Metatite, 8.5. Ammonite, looking strong there at an 8. Pikachu at a 9. Which, big shout out to this big Pikachu down here. Very, very gorgeous mat. If you are unfamiliar, these mats were given out during the online team challenges. So, how those would work is that you would play in qualifiers for a store, and the four winners of four qualifiers would then be put onto a team. And this team would play online on the Pokemon TCGO and compete against other stores in team championship style. Uh, the teams that made top 256 on this last round got this beautiful playmat with Pikachu VMAX on it. So, if you are interested in trying to score one of these really cool unique mats, Make sure to go down to your local comic book store and see if they're competing in these team challenges. If so, you have a chance to represent your store and possibly win some cool prizes. Moving on, we have a C dot. We have a Shuppet. And before I continue, I'm just going to get some of these out of the way here so we can tidy up the area. Okay. Next up, Skitty, PSA 9. Bring these guys a little bit closer. Try not to run as far. Black Off at a 9. Sonora at an 8. Spew at a 9. Swablu also at a 9. Torchic, 9. Pinch, Mighty Nine, Vulpix at a nine, and why not? One of my favorite Pokemon, just because the amount of puns that can be made from his name are just fantastic. So we've uh, completed our first box there. A lot of really, really cool cards. By far, i got to say my favorites are still the uh, three evolutions that we got. Grab those real quick for another viewer. Gorgeous. These things are amazing. Big shout out to these guys. They're fantastic looking. Awesome. So we're going to move this box to the side for now. Grab another box and we're going to keep on trucking through these things. 
Alrighty, next up we're moving to Call of Legends. Call of Legends was a very fantastic set because it had a lot of really unique cards and a couple of unique uh, game mechanics within it. Those mechanics would be the Legend pieces. Obviously, the Legend Pokemon um, had to be legendary Pokemon, and it would be kind of like a tag team mashup, usually most of the time. Um, <clears throat> in fact, you could actually consider Call of Legends to be one of the first sets to feature team-ups before we actually got these team-up sets in these last like Sword and Shield eras. Um, the Legend pieces, you required two cards to be able to use the card, and some of the more popular ones were like Raikou Suicune, the Legendary Dogs, uh, so it would be Raikou Suicune, Suicune Entei, Entei Raikou, uh, so you had all three different options there. Um, there's Dark Rank Cresselia, there's Rayquaza Deoxys, and uh, a lot of these were actually very powerful in the competitive scene. Um, Rayquaza Deoxys Legend was incredibly powerful. Cresselia Darkrai was incredibly powerful. Um, a lot of really, really cool mechanics back then. A lot of fantastic artwork, too. Uh, now, if you notice a lot of these, these are traditional hollow foils. So these are not those reverse hollow foils like we were talking about in the EX era. Oop, got a little swirly on this Kyogre. And uh, so, like I was saying, they moved away from those uh, EX Legend era or EX era reverse hollows and moved back to more of this traditional outer border being foil. Uh, Lugia, really cool looking Lugia. So, Magmortar, great card. Call of Legend Nine Tails, really, really great card, very powerful ability. Uh, the ability with Poke Power, which is once during your turn, you may discard a fire energy from your hand. If you do, draw three cards. Nine Tails with a great engine for those fire decks, as they love getting uh, fire energies into their discard pile to recycle, reuse, and to replenish. Um, Nine Tails was just a very fantastic card in almost any deck because of the ability to cycle through your deck and draw tons of cards very, very quickly. Let's see, Palkia came in at a nine or eight, I apologize. Rayquaza, he came in at a nine. Really cool looking artwork. Uh, so, speaking of some high meta cards, this is another one. This is the uh, Smeargle from Call of Legends. And his ability, Portrait, basically said if Smeargle is your active Pokemon, you can look at your opponent's hand, choose any supporter found there, and use that ability as if it was his power. So, really cool way to kind of sneak in double supporters a turn, depending on what your opponent had. Umbreon, really, really cool looking guy. <clears throat> Continue on with our evolution theme today. Flareon, 8.5. Jolteon. So we've got Umbreon, Flareon, Jolteon. Here's Vaporeon. And Eevee himself. Now moving on, we got some of the more cooler, harder pulls to hit in these series. Uh, we have the SL series. Um, so these could be pulled from normal packs, just much fancier versions of the normal cards. So this Deoxys, very, very cool, has an old EX style border. Entei, and I believe these are all just shiny variants of their counterparts. And you know, when I say shiny variants, I do mean not that the card is holographic, but you know, the Pokemon itself is a shiny. Kyogre. Uh, oh, this is a new one. This one says heart. Got like a little heart in the foil. Kind of cool. Palkia. Raikou. And that Rayquaza we saw earlier. Here's his counterpart. The shiny. Suicune. And now we're moving on to Diamond and Pearl. So card number one, Diamond Pearl, is Dialga. Alright, just going to clean up the area one more time real quick, folks. 
or flying through these cards. <clears throat> so Diamond and Pearl was a very, very cool set. Um, as we go through, I'll be able to recognize a couple of these cards, I'm sure, just from seeing them throughout my uh, years of collecting. Um, I don't believe I was heavily active in the Diamond and Pearl era playability-wise, though. I just don't think that was an era that I was playing the game. I think I had a couple of other things going on in my life. And uh, cards have just kind of fallen out for me for a little bit, which is a shame because this was such a really cool era. A lot of really awesome artworks. The foils are gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Like, I don't know if they could get any more holographic on this card. This thing is amazing. Luxury. Yeah, because I believe this is the era of the level X's. Magnazone. I think I took an extended hiatus from playing Pokemon for a while, and I kind of came back like right at the beginning phase of Black White. Um, I think I came back and I was playing Magnazone. Magnazone Eels. Eel Trick and Magnazone. Uh, and I went to the National Championships out in Indianapolis, which was a blast, always is, every time. And uh, I think I did okay. I mean, obviously, I didn't top or anything, but I had a blast, and it was fun. Rosary. <clears throat> Got a shift tree. Got a nine. Tank at an 8.5. Staraptor at an 8. Torterra, 8.5. And Polyon at level X. Came in at a 9. Infernape level X. Also a 9. And Torterra. Level X. Beautiful line on that as well. So we've got through about 100 cards or so. Actually about 100, 150 cards or so. Making pretty good progress here. They're showing off a lot of this really cool stuff. Talking about the history of the cards. And if anyone ever has any questions about any of the cards featured or the history or just really anything, feel free to comment down below. I do like to check the comments and respond if I can. Um... So, yeah, hit me with some fun questions. I'd be eager to answer some. Moving on, we're moving on to Mysterious Treasures. Ava Palm, got a 9. As else, also a 9, a little swirly on that guy. Blissey. Gorgeous artwork there. Um, Gem Mint 10 on this Celebi. Gorgeous. Um, as I was saying earlier, the really cool thing about the Pokemon community, as I kind of whipped through some of these so we get some really cool, exciting stuff. Um, Pokemon community is such a fantastic community, so friendly, so loving, um, so much of a family. Uh, there have been several tournaments that I've been at where just the amount of honesty that the Pokemon player base has had is just mind-blowing. Uh, I remember specifically there was a tournament, there was a... Uh, younger kid who was playing in the juniors division and he was playing a pretty expensive deck he was playing a lot of really high-end cards a lot of very very rare cards and i believe through the course of the day this kid lost his deck i want to say about five times and each and every single time it was turned in by a different player um that just blew my mind you know this kid's deck that was probably worse anywhere from like four to six hundred dollars and got turned in every single time that the kid lost it i think around the last time we made the joke that if he lost it again we're keeping it <laughs> needless to say he didn't lose it after that time <laughs> right you got a nine on that guy i flew in also came in a nine big tyranitar Nine. And oopsie. 
Bastiodon, 8.5 as well. Gyarados, 8.5 in the Rev Hollow. Nine Tails, Rev Hollow of an 8. Really cool artwork on that one. Moving on to some more level X's. Here we have Electivire level X, came in at a PSA 9. Lucario came in at an 8. Magmortar, also an 8. And Secret Rare of the set, Time Space Distortion. Very, very cool card, but I don't think this card is playable at all. Flip three coins for each time to search your discard pile for a Pokemon, show it to your opponent, put it in your hand. Don't think that was very playable. Moving on, we're moving to the Secret Wonder set. Uh, Amphros came in at a 9. Blastoise came in at an 8. Charizard, 8.5. That's fantastic. Not only did we get a sweet looking Charizard, but it also came in that initial little 8.5 spot. Again, I think those things are rarer than 9s or 10s, in my opinion. Entei, Gem Mint 10. Okay, well, maybe not rarer than a 10, but you've seen some of the populations out here. Gorgeous Flygon. Blade. This is by far one of my favorite artworks for Guard of War. They did such a fantastic job. Boyle looks like such a good background there. Guard of War is out in the front with the flower patch. Gastrodon. East Sea. Gastrodon. West Sea. Ho oh. Got a nine. And we'll get a little bit more cleaning up here. We're flying through these guys. I'm gonna go through about another row and a half here. And we're gonna call it a, call it for part one of these part two two part video. Jump Luff. Gorgeous swirl on that one. Licky licky. 8.5. Ludicolo, one of my favorite Pokemon, because he just always seems to be in a good mood, partying and having fun. We'll say in Protect the Pikachu, he looked kind of creepy. Uh, they did a really good job of making Pokemon look a little uh, little off in that film. Not that they looked bad, but man, I would not want to run into Mr. Mime in a dark alleyway. Mew, my favorite Pokemon. Gorgeous card. Raikou. Roserade, Salamence, Suicune, came in at a 9, Venusaur also got a 9, Arcanine got a 9, how fitting. Moving on to some level X's now, we got a Gardevoir level X, came in at a beautiful 9. Honchkrow, 8.5. Moving on to some great encounters cards. We got Blaziken, Gem Mint 10. Cresselia, 9. Darkrai, Gem Mint 10. And Pachirisu came in at a 9. So we've roughly gone through about, I want to say, 200 cards now. A lot of really cool cards so far. I think my favorites have got to be the, uh, got to be the dogs still. I think they're still winning. But we're going to see what we get in this next batch here. <coughs> so, Toys R Us Charmander came back at a 9. This one came in at a 6, but he's got a swirl. Ancient Mew came back a six. Another Ancient Mew at an eight. Another Ancient Mew at a nine. Very, very pretty cards. 
This ancient Mew came back with two swirls. Gorgeous. The third one. Almost looked like a third swirl there. I got excited. This guy, no swirlies. Another one. Single swirl. Gem Mint 10 Full Art Blastoise. Very cool. Charmeleon. That's state championships one. Came back with an eight. The Sky Ridge Flareon Hollow. Seven. Swampert. Came back an eight. Another Swampert and an eight. Looks like these guys are kind of all over the place. We're getting all sorts of cool things. So we've had Sky Ridge, we're getting Leisure Maker, we're getting EX Sandstorm. Which these e-reader sandstorm cards are super cool. One of my favorite artworks for Absol ever. EX Team Magma versus Team Aqua. Came back a nine. Gorgeous card. Jolteon. 8.5. Dust Clops, also 8.5. X Cloud at an 8. Blaze Again at an 8. <coughs> Clefable EX. Fire Red Leaf Green. Mr. Mime EX. <clears throat> Another Mr. Miami X at a 7. Well, I got some more Call of Legends cool cards. Have the Entei here. Came back an 8. This one came back 7. Got another 8 here, but he's featuring a swirl. Umbreon at a 4. Poor little guy. This is one that I think just saw some uh, saw some love. Umbreon at an eight as well. Ooh, we're getting some spicy cards now, folks. Here we go. Let's have some fun. Team up Charizard staff promo eight point five. Gorgeous looking card. Mega Charizard from Evolutions came back on nine. Base at Charizard. Five. The one who started it all. This is every childhood dream. Owning one of these bad boys. The reprinted Evolutions Charizard came back a nine. Dark Charizard came back a five. Some really cool cards here. Gonna clean some of this up real quick once more. Okay, back to it. Tropical Tidal Wave came back in eight. This is the top 32 promo. So you had to compete in the World Championships back in 2006 to score this guy. Very, very cool. And not only do we have one of them, we have two of them. This one came back five, a little bit more rough for wear, but very, very pretty card. Nidoran came back at a nine. Guzmahala came back at 10. Eight point five on this gorgeous alternate art. Gem in ten on the original. Nine on it. 
And another gem mint pack. Gorgeous. This Yon V. Came back a nine on the full art. Last couple of cards, folks, before we wrap up today's video. Keldeo GX, gem mint 10. Gorgeous rainbow rare card. Garchomp and Giratina. Gorgeous looking card. Mina, gem mint 10 for all you trainer collectors. Low and nine tails GX at a nine. Green's exploration, gem and ten. Unbroken bonds Charizard, gem and ten. And Charizard from Legendary Treasures closing out with the Charizard today, folks. Gorgeous, gorgeous card. All of these cards and many, many more will be featured on Collector's Edition 101.com. And remember, if you are new to the site, feel free to use coupon code WELCOME for 10% off your order. And uh, again, any questions, comments, concerns, please let us know. We are here to help each and every one of you. Uh, we want our transactions to be as smooth as possible. And we want to hear some of your stories. Comment down below. Tell us some of the cool memories that you have with Pokemon, whether it's a recent memory, an old memory, something that you remember from growing up. Would love to hear these stories. and I would love to discuss some of them. And as always, folks, thank you for joining us. Class dismissed.